kindly we're going to start now we have a long evening and we want to make sure we are respectful to everyone to have an opportunity to testify uh, my name is Dennis Walcott and I have the honor of being uh, the chair of this commission and while we have several of our commissioners here others will be joining us virtually let me have the commissioners who are here uh, introduce themselves starting off with Mark Mark you want to Good evening. My name is Mark Wurzel. Uh, grew up in Forest Hills. Currently live on the Upper East Side. Mark? Uh, no, no. Mark. Okay. I know. Hello. Oh. Yes, my name is Mark Nisba Wooden, representing the Queens and the Labor Movement. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Kevin Hanratty uh, from Jackson Heights, Queens. Thank you, Kevin. And our executive director? John Plateau, servant of the people. Welcome, John, and thank you to the commissioners. I'm not sure if we have any commissioners virtually, but we'll bring them on as we see them. And uh, before I get to our first uh, person to testify, I just want to go over a couple of housekeeping things. As you know or may know, we have a long agenda for this evening. And in addition to that, we want to make sure uh, we get all the folks in as possible and for those who may have large groups we're kindly and friendly asking uh, if you're a large group if you can possibly designate a couple of people to testify that may be helpful as well as far as uh, allowing others to testify really not late late at night but you know we're saying it's up to you but we are requesting that as well uh, we will have a uh, walk-in testimony being accepted as well uh, and Walkins will be called after the pre-registered testimony is complete. And should you decide you want to testify and say it's getting too late, uh, we'll have other hearings in other boroughs where you can testify both in person or virtually as well. Uh, tomorrow is the uh, hearing at Lehman College at uh, CUNY, the Gillette Auditorium, also from 5.30 to 9 p.m. Thursday, August 18th. Uh, it is also from 5.30 to 9 at Staten Island Borough Hall. Sunday, we'll be holding a hearing at Mega Evers College, and that one will be from 3.30 to 7 p.m. And Monday, on August 22nd, we'll be at the Schomburg Center uh, for Research in Black Culture up in Harlem, and that is also from 5.30 to 9. So you have an opportunity either to be in person or to testify virtually. Now, we're at this great museum as a result of uh, the support and the advocacy of our local council member who is here uh, virtually and she has been just there always and being supportive of making sure we have access to the museum and also able to extend the hours of the museum so we could accommodate uh, those who want to testify beyond our original uh, close time of 9 p.m. Uh, she's on the road. I will let you hear from her as far as uh, where she's at but she is uh, representing uh, our city in a variety of ways and it's my pleasure to say one a personal thank you to the council member thank you for everything you've done to allow us to be here in your advocacy and also being there for your constituents and it's my honor to uh, bring on council member Julie Wong Julie council member Thank you so much, Commissioner Walcott, as well as the rest of the redistricting commission. My name is Julie Wan, representing the 26th district where you currently are sitting or zooming into, representing Law and the City, Sunnyside, Woodside, and Astoria. I believe it is not a mistake that currently I can't be there physically in person because as the first Korean American elected official, uh, council member Linda Lee and I both have been invited to South Korea to meet with the Korean government in celebration of the Korean Independence Day, as well as um, other planning to make sure that we are continuing to um, be representatives of the United States, as well as New York City uh, as a sister city to Seoul. For me, uh, I just want to clarify that our testimony that um, my office and I have created is a reflection of what we have heard from the community since the first iteration of maps have been have been released. We have heard both from the Manhattan and Roosevelt Island side, as well as on the Queen side, and we have tried our best to follow the unity map and have adapted it to make sure that we are meeting every single community member's needs because we are an incredibly engaged and um, we're an incredibly engaged community that is pretty much really like a family. 
And it's also no mistake that you see me in Korea because this is the first time that we've elected a Korean American, but also an Asian American. And we have seen that in the last 2020 census that the Asian American population in District 26 has grown by 33%, as well as the immigrant population represents almost more than half at 60%. And we know that to, according to the latest census, 66% of my district has um, has has said that they are representative of people of color. So first and foremost, according to the city charter's criteria, I want to make sure that we are fighting for fair and effective representation of racial and language minority groups protected by the VRA. And those are Asian Americans, Black Americans, as well as Latin Amer those of Latin American descent and keeping our communities of interest intact. So right now with the first proposed map from the redistricting commission, I want to point out that it does opposite of that and it violates those two criteria. Our white population increases from 29% to 44% and the Hispanic population increases from 29% uh, decreases from 29% to 22%. Asian American population decreases from 31% to 25% and the black population decreases 6% to 4%. So that means that every single group protected by the VRA has now been decreased in population and only the white population has increased. And I also want to point out that According to the latest census, the most recently proposed map for District 26 would also double our average income from about 70 to 80K to 140 to 150K. So again, I wanna reiterate, we go from mostly a working class, people of color district and 60% foreign born of immigrants to a white, district that is predominantly wealthy, that violates the VRAs, um, the city charter completely. In addition to the violations for the first two, I also want to point out that our district compactness goes from almost a perfect square to a C shape. And we're supposed to limit crossover districts, yet we see another addition of a borough crossover district between Queens and Manhattan. And we are hearing very loudly from Community Board 8 on the Manhattan side, as well as our Roosevelt Island neighbors and neighbors in the Upper East Side that they do not wish to be in a crossover district and would like to remain in Manhattan. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, as well as Council Member Julie Menon, um, Borough President Mark Levine, and former Borough President and now Council Member Gail Brewer have all written public letters with um, each other saying that they would like to they would like the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island to remain in Manhattan. And Community Board 2, as well as myself, support this fully that the borough stays intact in Manhattan and the borough stays intact in Queens fully. And I also want to point out that it is not contiguous, that in order for me to travel to Roosevelt Island or any of my residents to travel to Roosevelt Island, according to the latest preliminary map, I would have to physically leave this district to get to the land bridge that is in District 22 to get to Roosevelt Island. And I also want to make sure that it is clear that we're supposed to avoid oddly shaped districts. And again, we go from almost a compact, perfectly square rectangular district to now a C-shaped district, the opposite of what we currently had and also violating the city charter's requirements. So according to the city charter and looking at our preliminary maps, it is very clear that almost every single one of the city charter's criteria have been violated by the first preliminary map. So we ask you as a district to not have crossover districts between Manhattan and Queens, and that you listen to our neighbors on both sides, that Roosevelt Island and Upper East Side remain in Manhattan. And in addition to that, you will hear from multiple community groups, from the Filipino American community, um, the Tibetan American community, the Nepali American community, the Colombian community, the Ecuadorian community, um, and there are and the, um, our black community from the Naichas that are going to plead with you to make sure that our community remains in whole because when you fracture them into four different council districts, then you are eliminating their ability to advocate and effectuate public policy for public interest. And by fracturing representation, it will, res it will negatively impact where they reside, where they live, where they work, where they worship, and where they gather. And we do not want 
the immigrant community or the black community being divided into multiple council districts, which you predominantly see in Woodside. And you will continue to hear from them in detail of how this is going to impact their late daily lives, but I just also want to make sure that it is clear to my entire community in District 26 that I personally am heartbroken, but I have no choice but to lose population as well as land because I am 11, 000, roughly about 11,000 people over the limit. And in order for us to do so, we are going to be working closely with you, continuing to listen to the community on where you would like to see the district lines be drawn, and we will continue to support that. So the current um, council map that we are proposing have been, again, an adoption of what the unity maps have been, along with our community partners and the nonprofits and faith leaders who have asked us to support them to make sure that places of faith or places of worship, their small businesses and places where they gather like Little Manila, Little Bangladesh, um, Tibet Way, and um, all of those other community groups continue to remain intact together. Lastly, I want to point out that the Tibetan American represent, um, represents a geopolitically persecuted community who have been part of tw District 26 since the 90s when they first seeked asylum here as refugee seekers. And the largest Tibetan American community center for the country of the United States is in Woodside. Tibetan American community members predominantly reside in, a, um, in Sunnyside, Woodside, and have started their migration from Astoria as well as Long Island City. And by cutting them into four different council districts, especially in Woodside, it would completely diminish the political power that they have been building for the last 20 years, especially as a geopolitically persecuted group. So I ask that you would listen intently to all of the Tibetan American community members that will be testifying, as well as the other Himalayan community members like the Nepali community and the Bhutanese community who are also part of this community, along with so many other immigrants who make up the district and if you ask anybody, immigrant, a person of color or white, whoever you may be, if you stand in Sunnyside and you ask them where Woodside begins, or if you stand in Woodside and you, and you ask them where Sunnyside begins, you will start an outright war because we are one community. We refer to ourselves as the sides because there is no side. We are one. Sunnyside and Woodside must remain together. Um, that is the end of my testimony. Oh, and I also want to add that Blissful is also a, a huge part of our community, and we want to make sure that we all stay together. I recognize that along the border, because I have to lose 11,000 people, um, we are going to lose land somewhere, but I just want to point out that um, Blissful has been a beloved part of this community. They have been active members of our community board, as well as just um, everything from ecological issues from Newtown Creek. Their advocacy has been tremendous, and they are a beloved part of the district. We would like to continue to remain intact. So I continue to hope that you will listen to all of us and I thank you so much for your time. Council Member Lenny, thank you for your testimony and we appreciate you uh, virtual presence from Korea. So thank you and have a safe trip and productive trip and congratulations to both you and Council Member Lee as well. So thank you very much. A couple more housekeeping pieces for the audience as well. Uh, just so you'll know that we have official transcription taking place. So we have a transcriber here who is taking very detailed notes and that we do take a look at them afterwards. And we just want you to be aware of that. In addition to that, uh, we have other commissioners who have joined us. So uh, starting with the judge. Judge, just introduce yourself. I'm Marilyn Go. I was uh, I'm a retired U.S. magistrate judge who sit, uh, sat in Brooklyn. Thank you, Judge. Yo. Uh, Lisa. Oh, Lisa. I'm so sorry. I looked at you. I'm so sorry. Good evening, Lisa Soren from the Bronx. Here, take it. Jovan Collado from the Bronx as well. Kevin Sullivan, Manhattan. Thank you, and also I know virtually we have um, Commissioner Johnson. Hi everyone, good evening. I'm Kristen Johnson from Brooklyn. Thank you very much. 
Uh, I'm not sure if any other members are yet on virtual, but again, we'll have them introduce themselves as they join us. Uh, next, we have Council Member Natasha Williams. Council Member. Um, Mike is up there, to right behind Council Member Holden. Good evening, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Council Member Natasha Williams, currently serving the 27th Council District, which encompasses St. Albans, Cambria Heights, Addislade Park, Hollis, Queens Village, parts of Springfield Gardens, and Jamaica. After reviewing the proposed maps that the New York City Districting Commission released, I believe that it would be a disservice to the community to implement these district lines. In the release preliminary map, Rochdale Village is split between two council districts. This historic city within a city should be kept contiguous in one council district. This current separation would disenfranchise this community, which is currently in Speaker Adams' district, uh, and diminish the powerful voice that exists. Additionally, the proposal leaves downtown Jamaica out of my council district, District 27. Downtown Jamaica is critical to the 27th Council District and has historically been a part of the district uh, many, many moons ago before I even became council member. Uh, this would stall so many of the ongoing projects contributing to the revitalization of the Southeast Queens community uh, that I myself have been working on since the beginning of my term, um, following up uh, from the amazing work of my predecessor, Council Member Miller and Council Member Comrie, and back to Council Member Spigner. An example of this is the Downtown Jamaica Task Force that Queensboro President Donovan Richards and I began. This task force is comprised of multiple city agencies, elected officials, businesses, and community leaders, all working towards a goal of ensuring a vibrant downtown Jamaica. The downtown Jamaica is also where most of the assets in the 27th Council District are found. It is the home of Jamaica Center Arts and Learning, the Jamaica Performing Arts Center. We have York College, which is not only a great educational institution, but an amazing community partner. It is also home to new developments, such as the Greater Nexus co-working space that I was incredibly proud to attend the grand opening of. Uh, it is the legacy of downtown, the legacy of downtown Jamaica belongs in the 27th Council District because it began in this district. Downtown Jamaica is a hub and serves as the connection for thousands of commuters in Southeast Queens, specifically my council district. Um, it is commonly known that Southeast Queens is a transportation desert and relies heavily on the bus network that is al also located in the downtown Jamaica area. The bus terminal in this district directly serves residents from my district. It is a project that I have been heavily involved in as well, working with MTA and the Department of Transportation because it is in desperate need of repair. I have been a strong advocate for the downtown Jamaica area and will continue, this and will continue the advocacy for this area, ensuring that it is unified under the 27th Council District should be a priority to the commission. Uh, instead of removing it completely from the district, which the current draft maps do, we actually should be representing more of it um, as we did uh, 10 years ago when uh, redistricting happened. Um, I would like to thank the New York City Districting Commission. I know this is really hard work um, and I commend you. I am not jealous of you um, and appreciate your uh, intention around making sure this is an equitable process and your listening ear. I look forward to listening to the rest of the testimonies, reading the rest of the testimonies, and having ongoing conversations on the redistricting process. Thank you so much. Thank you, Council Member. Next, we'll have Council Member Robert Holden. Council Member. Thank you so much. And uh, again, I'm uh, Council Member Robert Holden. I represent right now the 30th Council District which is uh, constituents in Maspeth, Middle Village, Glendale, and parts of Woodside and Woodhaven and Ridgewood. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks again for your, it's a very challenging job that you guys have and I appreciate 
the undertaking here and um, uh, for your willingness to be transparent uh, as this process moves forward. I urge you to seriously consider the public testimony um, you're hearing today, not only from me and other council members, but from civic associations and individuals as well. Uh, today you'll hear my thoughts on the current draft map, and then I'll offer some solutions to some of the problems I see with the current map and offer recommendations on what the final lines of the 30th Council District um, might look like and, and should look like. My testimony is based on what I have been hearing from my constituents and also residents from other council districts who believe they should be part of the new 30th District moving forward. Um, as part of my testimony, I have submitted a memo and map detailing my proposed lines for the 30th District. The Commission's draft plan splits neighborhoods comprised of one and two family or to two fa uh, three family homes um, out of the 30th District, and I think that's problematic. Um, and it, thus, it divides the communities that have the, the same interest, uh, the same housing stock. My recommendations for the new 30th will maintain a consistent housing stock throughout the district, keep natural borders of major highways and boulevards, which is, a, I think, a priority even for uh, the district and commission. It's, I think it's in chapter 50, 51, 52, um, and meet the target populations of about 172,000 voters. The most serious problem with the draft map is that it exceeds the 30th Council District north of Queens Boulevard to include parts of Woodside and remove sections of Glendale. So it kind of splits Glendale up. Um, and I'm lo you know, we're losing in the 30th Liberty Park, which, uh, again, why split the neighborhoods that have the same housing stock on the southern part of the district? Adding large Woodside apartments also um, to the, you know, actually, you know, makes the district kind of, um, you, you we're representing a large apartments and then one and two family, and that's been a problem uh, for, for a while. And it splits, uh, uh, Woodside uh, is split from itself and Sunnyside, um, which has similar housing stocks. So the southern part of the district, Liberty Park is separated from the rest of Glendale that I mentioned and is added to the 32nd council uh, and again, Liberty Park's housing stock is similar to Glendale's housing. So again, why split it up? Considering Liberty Park is already in the 30th Council District, and I think they're happy, and, and their civic associations, police department, community boards are all tied into the 30th Council District. It makes sense, more sense, to keep these residents in the new 30th rather than lumping Liberty Park residents into the same, uh, into, uh, the same Council District as the Rockaways, which is very, very far away from that. So um, besides removing Liberty Park, the draft plan also removes election district 14 uh, in the 38th assembly district, which is in Glendale. Uh, this ED comprises streets north of Myrtle Avenue and essentially removes our, you know, arbitrary blocks in the heart of Glendale out of the 30th district. Separating two sections of Glendale out of the 30th district is frustrating to residents. This type um, of arbitrary line drawing is what draws the ire of voters and ultimately results in illegal challenges that prolongs the redistricting process. The natural border of the 30th district should be Queens Boulevard, not arbitrary streets and avenues and, and, and side blocks. My proposal, which is supported by civic associations and residents, is to keep Glendale united extend the northern boundary of the 30th Council District to Queens Boulevard and include the Elmhurst Triangle in the district, which again, I have it in my drawings. The three corners of the triangle include Grand Avenue and 57th Avenue intersections in the south, the intersection of Woodhaven Boulevard and the LIE in the northeast and Queens Boulevard and Needland Street in the northwest. This neighborhood is considered Elmhurst. However, the housing stock and the neighborhood is more reflective of Maspeth, at least in my 30th council district. The residents attend, by the way, this is important, those residents attend the same civic meetings as the Maspeth residents right now. So they shop in the same local stores and their children attend the same schools as Maspeth residents. So again, please don't split them up. Um, including this neighborhood in the 30th council district will empower these residents to bring them into a greater, into the greater Maspeth community. Additionally, Sections of Regal Park, known as the Crescents, 
should be should be considered part of the 30th because again it's the same housing stock just as I've said um, you know about the other neighborhoods the Regal Park Crescents are comprised of single-family homes which makes the housing stock more like Middle Village and less like the rest of the 29th district so again that's a that's a, a suggestion is al also important to keep residents who are have the si similar housing like I mentioned before in the same council district the plan I outline will keep the and unite residents who have the same interests same zoning same civic meetings and whose children attend attend the same schools this includes the new areas of Queens I've identified it for expansion rather than arbitrary lines to meet population goals my proposal will have the natural borders that keep communities together so again I just want to end up if you look at my district now the 30th it extends from Queens Boulevard all the way down to Atlantic Avenue it's probably one of the longest districts at least in in square miles so if you look at that and then you look at the proposal that we're the, the 30th becomes square and it becomes shorter distances and more compact which I think is the goal so I want to thank you again for the hard work and uh, terrific work you're doing on behalf of New York City uh, we know it's not an easy process I encourage you to examine my proposals and everybody else's obviously <laughs> and and the f and really consider the 30th uh, map that I propose to be something that all I think the neighborhoods can work with around it too thank you so much thank you councilmember Holden um, next up is councilmember Savina Brooks Powers and as she is going up and then we'll go into uh, the public we have one more council member virtually then we'll be going into uh, the general public uh, just to let you know that if you require interpretation services we have interpreter interpretation services provided by the mayor's office of immigrant affairs with us tonight please let one of our folks know about that also i would be remiss if i didn't thank uh, the mayor and his team the speaker and her team for all their help and support about tonight as well so thank you and council member brooks powers good evening i'm councilwoman Sylvina brooks powers proudly representing district 31 which include Arvern, Brookville, Edgemere, Far Rockaway, Laurelton, parts of Rockaway Beach, and Rosedale. I would like to thank Commissioner Walcott and the entire New York City District and Commission for granting me this opportunity to testify on behalf of my district once again, this time in response to the preliminary maps. As the maps take shape, we must ensure there is minimal disruption and that communities of color, specifically black and brown communities, do not see our, their voting power marginalized and their voice diminished. History has shown that redrawing the lines in this way will dilute Council District 31's voting power and misalign the community's collective voice. In the state's redistricting process, we saw firsthand historically black communities, like in the case of Senate District 14, where Queens Village essentially disenfranchised due to the new lines were drawn out of the district and now include other communities of interest and dilute our voice in government. I am here to make sure that doesn't happen in District 31. Southeast Queens, a community predominantly composed of African-American one and two family homeowners is a community of interest, sharing similar ethnic and demographic backgrounds that share a unified voice. Southeast Queens encompasses districts 27, 28, and 31, represented in the city council by the only three black elected officials in the entire borough of Queens. My community wants to ensure that we can maintain our representation for residents and maintain our historic assets. From downtown Jamaica in district 27, Rochdale Village in district 28, and JFK Airport in district 31. I'd like to thank the commission for listening to the voices of my community by making JFK Airport whole under the 31st Council District in the preliminary map issued by this commission here. My communities are most acutely impacted by the flight path of JFK, especially those that live in Rosedale, Springfield Gardens, and Far Rockaway. JFK is nestled in between our communities and it is important 
My neighborhoods have one representative that is speaking with a unified voice around issues of noise mitigation and environmental justice. I think it's also important to note that JFK is represented by one congressional member, one state senator, one assembly member, and should also be represented by one council member in the 31st district. I'd also like to thank the commission for ensuring the Hamels houses and Arvern by the Sea both remain within the district, recognizing the economic and social contributions both developments contribute to the overall district. The Hamels development currently is the tail end of the 31st Council District, um, and it is predominantly African American population. Uh, it anchors our district. It is one of five NYCHA developments that exist in the community. It is also a consolidated NYCHA development with Carlton Manor houses as well. However, the commission's preliminary maps propose to cut out portions of Springfield Gardens, one of the existing enclaves in my district and longstanding District 31 community, replacing it with parts of Ozone Park. It would not only remove the Springfield Gardens Church of the Nazarene, a major institution in my district, but also segregate community organizations such as the Springfield, Taxpay Springfield Gardens Taxpayers Association. We'd like to see Springfield Gardens restored to maintain these connections. I respectfully ask the commission to consider adopting the map that can be found at districtr.org backslash plan backslash 137 797. I have hosted a number of public sessions across my district and have consistently heard the desire to keep the lines the way they currently exist, with the exception of wanting to see JFK Airport wholly in, within District 31, as the Commission has already proposed in the preliminary map. Residents have also expressed the desire to bring two important assets that up until 10 years ago was a part of the 31st District um, back into the district, which is the Stop and Shop Plaza at Merrick and Springfield Boulevards and Montebello Park, both in Springfield Gardens. Additionally, the Rockaway Peninsula should remain as they currently stand and not be adjusted. The current peninsula representation includes a vibrant Jewish community, several NYCHA developments, and everything in between. Developments like Arvin by the Sea help to create generational wealth for many young black and brown homeowners. Our communities share similar needs and rally around many of the same issues, such as access to emergency health care, which we have a task force forming right now, the digital divide, illegal dumping and commercial parking where there currently exists a task force in the, that started in my district, lower property taxes, equitable funding for our schools, environmental justice issues dealing with Jamaica Bay and Rockaway Beach, which both are a part of the district as well currently, and the need for better infrastructure, just to name a few. As stated in my previous testimony, redrawing our lines has, the redrawing our lines should not dilute our voting power or weaken our voice. It is vitally important that my district remains intact and include the Stop and Shop Plaza and all of JFK Airport. We need districts that unify our communities together, strengthen our voices, and ensure upward economic mobility. I appreciate all of the work the commissioners have invested to date and urge the commission to keep these issues in mind as you continue your work. Thank you. Thank you, council member, and we appreciate your testimony as well. Uh, we'll have one more council official, and then we'll get to the audience, and that's council member virtually, council member Ariola. Council member? Is the council member available? Yes. Oh, there you are. Yes. You're there up. I am. My name is Joanne Ariola, and I'm the council member for District 32 in Queens. Thank you for the opportunity to offer testimony regarding the preliminary dis redistricting maps released by the districting committee that will directly affect the residents of District 32. District 32 has always been a district rich in cultural diversity. Immigrants from across the world have called it home and over the course of many decades have opened their businesses here. From Ireland to Guyana, 
you can you can find every culture, race, and religion in our district. When one looks at the racial diversity ratio of the two community boards within the district that have sizable areas located on the mainland portion of Council District 32, you will note that they have been described as among the community board's districts, most diverse community board districts in this borough. Over the course of decades, Council District 32's composition has ensured that it reflects all sorts of good government groups across the nation, say should be the ultimate goal of reapportionment. Competitive districts where no single political party has a gerrymandered advantage. Over the course of decades, residents of District 32 have been represented by persons of different parties along the way. Pre-1993, it was represented by a Democrat from 93 to 2001, a Republican, who was followed by a Democrat, who was followed by a Republican. It's a competitive district, which is a good thing from the perspective that people who reside in the district evaluate and elect candidates based on their views of candidates' strengths and their ability to work to address issues and concerns in a matter beyond just party politics. The retail strips within the district have people from all parts of the district shopping them in them no matter which part of the district people reside in. Our children may live in one part of the district but attend school, whether public or parochial, in another part of the district. The same is true of all the diverse religious institutions across the district. People often live in one part of the district yet worship in another. Youth groups and sports leagues also draw their participants from all parts of the district. As adjustments are considered to the proposed map for Council District 32, I would urge that you evaluate how better to keep communities of interest intact from a perspective of common interests and concerns. For example, East Glendale and Woodhaven share similar transportation interests as Woodhaven Boulevard is the corridor that runs through both and one of the city's flagship parks of both neighborhoods and the needs and concerns would be better addressed from a governmental standpoint if both were in District 32. Adding East Glendale to the district as opposed to Liberty Park would make the district more compact and more contiguous. The neighborhoods of Woodhaven and the eastern portion of Glendale are connected by Woodhaven versus neighborhoods of Woodhaven and Liberty Park, which are separated by Forest Park and would isolate Liberty Park and the Ridgewood portion currently included in the proposed District 32 map from the rest of the district. Under the current map, one would literally have to pass through District 30 or Brooklyn to get to Liberty Park Ridgewood piece of the proposed 32nd Council district map. The two communities share a common bus and driving route and the traffic problems associated with it. Both neighborhoods would be affected by proposed Queenslink, Greenway, and the Rockaway Beach line reactivation. And both are underserved by public transportation and have a common interest in seeing north to south transportation options improved. Another example would be retaining the south, the area in South Ozone Park, south of Rockaway Boulevard, that is currently in Council District 32 between 114th Street and Lefferts Boulevard. Community concerns, housing stock, density, and the diverse area are far more similar to Howard Beach than to areas north of Rockaway Boulevard. Transportation, sanitation, policing, and many other city issues are also similar. I urge that you consider the common interest, interest regarding the two examples above, I've, the two examples I've mentioned, when considering the lines that will define Council District 32. I thank you for your time, your hard work, willingness to listen, and time to present. Thank you, Council Member, for your testimony. Uh, now we'll go down the list and we'll start with, is it Amelia Dakota? Hello and good evening. Um, my name is Amelia Decauden. I am the state committee member and district leader for Assembly District 37, which includes Long Island City, Hunters Point, Sunnyside, and Ridgewood. I'm testifying today against the current proposed plan for Council District 26 and the surrounding districts, um, in part for a lot of the reasons that Council Member Wan stated. Um, but I want to restate some of those in my own words to really give folks a clear picture of what it means for communities of interest 
like Woodside and other places to be cut apart. When you're an advocate, an adv activist, or just someone whose life is impacted by the choices made by people in government, either your council members or the agencies run by the city or other state agencies that your council members are appealing to, it's a lot of work. Um, I, I know that a lot of commissioners here have done that kind of work and so you understand what goes in it. And when you're in a position where the kind of issue that you're trying to advocate for is directly making your life more difficult if it's directly contributing to a community's marginalization, the simple fact of the matter is that having to talk to multiple people, multiple council members to get the issue resolved, it goes from be multiplying by like one to two to three to like an ex a growing exponentially in difficulty, like 10, 20, and 30. Um, having to spread your efforts across multiple members um, it leads, in increases the likelihood that the departments that you're going to be speaking to, whether that's DOT or HPD or whatever agency you're trying to get your council member to advocate upon, is going to be more likely to run around the bush and like delay or deflect to other people for responsibility um, simply because it's easier to do so when responsibility is diffuse like that. Keeping our neighborhoods together is not just a metaphysical or abstract issue. It directly leads to different outcomes when it comes to performing the advocacy. On the level of the council member themselves, it also makes it more difficult for them to do their jobs when it comes to advocating for specific neighborhoods to um, those different agencies, um, as well as trying to get resources for institutions within those neighborhoods. We saw from the council member's testimony that the average income of this district is gonna increase. The average number of hospitals in the district is gonna increase even though they're all located on, or almost entirely located on the Manhattan side. Um, and those statistics are directly used when it comes to how funding is distributed to different districts and to different council members' uh, budgets. And having uh, those two disparate communities, you know, those parts of Manhattan that actually decided to bike uh, around this district and around Roosevelt Island today before giving my testimony to better understand the geography at play. And Roosevelt Island is a nice place, but it's very different from the communities that are currently represented in District 26. And combining those two communities, um, Sunnyside, Woodside, part, you know, parts of Woodside, Long Island City, with those parts of Roosevelt Island on the Upper East Side, is going to have a detrimental effect, uh, detrimental effect in the ability of those constituencies to advocate for themselves and for the council member to do their job. Um, and so I would ask that uh, when coming up with the next proposed draft, that you uh, limit the amount of cross borough, you know, cross river districts that are there. Um, and keep Woodside especially together. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Uh, next is James Hong. Is James Hong here? Uh, good evening. Thank good you evening. for your service in this redistricting process. My name is James Hong. Um, I'm here as a concerned citizen, and I'd like to talk about District 20 and 26. Uh, I'm a resident of Flushing, and I lived in Woodside for close to a decade, uh, ending in 2020. Uh, about District 20, uh, the draft map, unfortunately, uh, divides Flushing. Uh, that's the, yeah, divides Flushing through Murray Hill which is the center of Flushing's vibrant Korean-American community. This is where Korean New Yorkers live, work, eat, shop, sing karaoke. If you've ever driven or taken a bus down Northern Boulevard, there's not a block between Flushing and Bayside where you won't see a Korean restaurant, retail business, or church. Northern Boulevard is a thoroughfare and it shouldn't be used as a boundary especially in Murray Hill, but that's exactly what is happening now in the draft maps and also in the current map. So um, I'd like to ask that you please move the northern boundary for District 20 further north so that the district doesn't divide Flushing and includes all of what's considered Flushing, including Murray Hill. 
So please create Flushing Hole. Uh, use 20th Avenue or Willits Point Boulevard, meeting Francis Lewis Boulevard as the northern edge of District 20. Now, the place to shed population in District 20 is the eastern sort of foot of the district that juts into Auburndale and Bayside. Uh, the way it is right now, it makes, doesn't make a lot of sense. If you look at the boundaries of the community boards, the police precincts, and the school districts of Northeast Queens, none of them join Flushing with Auburndale across Utopia Parkway. Those who have grown up their whole lives in Northeast Queens can intuitively identify that Utopia Parkway is where Flushing ends. District 20 should also end at Utopia. And uh, just for the record, I believe we should keep the Van Wick and LIE as the western and southern boundaries of uh, District 20. And I also want to just uh, comment on District 26, uh, Western Queens. Woodside really belongs with Sunnyside and Long Island City within District 26. Uh, the, the draft map splits Woodside up badly, and it's joined with Maspeth, which has dramatically different politics, transportation, demographics. This, coupled with other big changes in LIC, radically shifts District 26's racial composition. Around uh, 10,000 Asian Americans will lose representation by the first Korean American in the city council, and the draft map threatens the ability of the remaining Asian Americans in that district to elect a candidate of their choice. Basically, this is a very anti-Asian change to District 26, and I urge you to reject it. In closing, I won't recap anything I said, uh, but I do want to touch on the prioritization of Staten Island. While I respect Staten Islanders' hopes in keeping their third district from having any part of Brooklyn, it shouldn't be done to the detriment of the other 94% of New York City's population. And I urge you to reconsider that change. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, next will be... Um, is it Tenzin Tzang? Mm -hmm. Good evening, commissioners. Good evening. My name is Tenzin Se Yang. I live in Woodside, District 26. I'm a Tibetan and I'm testifying in interest of the Tibetan community. 63 years ago, our ancestors were forced out of our home country, Tibet. When our people were mass massacred, our religion and our cultural institutions were just right into ashes. Since then, our people in the diaspora continue to experience genocide of our culture, language, and identity. Fortunately, with the passage of the Immigrant Act of 1990s, we were able to immigrate and we resettled in Astoria, Long Island City, Woodside, and Sinuside. The Tibetan community in New York City are made of Tibetans from Tibet, asylum seekers, refugees from India, Nepal, and Bhutan. Um, we are also Tibetan Americans, American-born Tibetans here. For over 30 years, the Tibetan community has been, un has made a unified has been a unified part of Council District 26 with experiencing multiple challenges like language and cultural barriers, navigating the ways of this country with limited resources and doing the oddest jobs in this country, we thrive to remain in a cluster within District 26. And we were able to preserve our language and identity, identity that continues to face genocide. Today, we are well over 15,000 Tibetans in District 26, um, mostly in Sunnyside and Woodside. District 26 is now a new home, a new found home, and we have built a community center at 5712 32nd Avenue uh, in Woodside. And we also had a street in front of that community center named Tibet Way. Um, and we also gather here at the Tibetan Community Center, community center that is the largest nonprofit organization in uh, Tibetan nonprofit organization in North America. And um, we gather here for cultural ce celebrations, spiritual gatherings, um, and for the first time ever in these 30 years, after facing multiple challenges, we were able to have first Tibetan speaking um, women and working in council, city council. Um, for the first time ever, we, we were uh, 
able to provide and receive resources in Tibetan language um, for this community. We never found resources in any, in, in any Tibetan language in any government agencies, any other council districts ever so far. Um, for the first time, we have two Tibetan-speaking Americans in, as community members, and that is a progress that we have recently made. After ourselves represented fail, fairly and effectively in this district, it is very, very disheartening to see this new, ma new map proposal, which takes Woodside out of um, separate, uh, out of um, Sunnyside and divide it into multiple council districts. Um, I just want to urge the commissioners here, please do not disempower us on this progress that we have just begun to make. In addition, I want to say that we want to say, stay with over 3,000 Himalayan community members who are in Sunnyside and Woodside, the Nepalese, the, um, the Bhutanese, and uh, other Himalayans. Uh, we share over 12,000 uh, spiritual connections, um, and we want to stay together with other Asians like Filipinos, like our Korean members uh, together. So um, um, if divided into four districts, like the new map proposed, it would disrupt the continuity of services that we just started to receive. The flow of resources for the Tibetan Community Center that we just begun to receive. And uh, further, I anticipate developers taking advantage of Woodside. And if it gets divided into multiple council dis districts, that will add on to vulnerability of our immigrant communities and it will further displace us. I strongly recommend and urge that Woodside stays together uh, with Long Island City, Sunnyside and Western Astoria like it has been for the last 30 years. And please do not displace us again. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. <laughs> Next. We will have Michael Nussbaum and then Essen Scott, and then we'll go from there to virtual testimony, then we'll come back to in-person testimony. So Michael Nussbaum and then Essen Scott, please. Thank you, Chairman Wolcott. Good to see you and Mr. Haggerty, who are from Queens here. Uh, I'm representing the Jewish Community Relations Council, but I'm also the president of the Queens Jewish Community Council. And I've been around this game for well over 50 years, and it's refreshing, finally, that New York City is looking at redistricting based on ethnicity and communities, not whether or not there is a D or an R or an I or a C when people draw lines. Queens is unique, as many of you know. We're the only borough that we recognize our neighbors and our neighborhoods when we write a letter. No one here writes just Queens, New York. We relate to the neighborhoods. And you are hearing it today. You don't hear Brooklyn saying, I'm in Cobble Hill, or the east side, I'm in Murray Hill. They write New York and Brooklyn, the Bronx, et cetera, and Staten Island. Queens is unique, and I don't envy your task in trying to come up with uh, the district lines here, but it's refreshing that the ethnicity issues, the neighborhood issues, are the priority. On behalf of the Jewish community, we are concerned. We are a minority. We are not categorized as the feds have in terms of race. There is no division in dividing on civil rights, on religion. But in District 24, there is a paramount issue about dividing a community on religion. So we're asking, and on behalf of the Jewish Community Council and others, we have submitted and will be continuing to, to submit a map that will be inclusive of districts in 24 that I think deserve to be put in. We've looked at the numbers. The numbers are reflected within a margin of less than 4% of the current district, which is a little bit under 167,000. We are not a majority of Jewish communities, but we're spread out within the 24th district, concentrated in Kew Garden Hills, Utopia, Hillcrest, and Fresh Meadows. We're also cognizant of our neighboring council people in terms of the South and in the East. We have an African American in the South, and we have an Asian American in the East, and we have the same in the North. 
We are looking to include the Cedar Grove area, which happens to be Asian American. We're looking to include the Hillcrest area, but most prominently we're looking to make sure that the division in the east, when it comes to the Utopia Fresh Meadows area, is not divided because we have synagogues and communities that are now divided where congregants are gonna be in two separate council districts. And we all know, as everyone here knows, ethnicity is important. Your community is important. Queens speaks over 300 different languages. You can't draw lines to accommodate every single ethnic group and religious group in this city of New York. You have to take in to a certain degree the politics, but more important, you gotta maintain neighborhoods. As Councilman Holden said, he believes you got to follow the structures of the buildings in the neighborhood. I feel you got to follow the structures of the communities where they live, where they work, where they get their education, and where they pray. And I hope and I understand when you look at our maps from the 24th, you'll see that. But as a Jewish leader in that particular district, they've elected in the past, and again, an Italian-American. So it's not ethnicity that determines who your representative is. It is the quality of that individual to represent you. And most of the council people in Queens are lucky enough to have communities that understand quality and respect is probably paramount. And I hope that you take into that account when dividing, particularly the 24th district. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, Essence Scott. Is Essence Scott? If not, then we will go virtual. Okay. Is it Zulema Blair virtually? Zulema Blair? If not, next virtual will be Russell Squire. Russell Squire? Oh, Zulema, I see her name. Zulema Blair? Yes. Okay, we can hear you now. You're up. Oh, I am? I don't, I'm here. Yes, do you have testimony? I do. Okay, I just can't. your turn to testify. I don't know if you could see me, could you? We cannot, but we can hear you clearly. Oh, yes, you can see me now. Hi, now we can. good evening, everyone. Okay, and thank you for having me. And um, so my name is Dr. Zalima Blair. I am chair of the Department of Public Administration at Mega Oaks College and the Redistricting Research Director at the Center for Law and Social Justice. The Center for Law and Social Justice is a part of the Unity Map Coalition. And the Unity Map Coalition represents um, Asian American Legal Defense Fund, Center for Law and Social Justice, and Latina Justice Pearl Death. And so we want to um, make sure that um, that it's a clear understanding that 51 districts were drawn and that we did to the best of our ability to represent the Voting Rights Act. Um, and so in doing so that we represented um, racial um, and language minorities um, to the best extent possible. And why that's important is because um, while we can't make everyone happy um, with the boundaries, uh, we do the best that we can to make sure that each community of interest is able to elect their candidates of choice. So for example, in the Bronx, where for years Wakefield had been cracked, we made, we made sure, and we're glad that the commission was able to do so, that the Northern Bronx is kept whole. Uh, however, Central Bronx that represents um, communities of interest of people of, of African descent um, are not as whole, as whole, and we wanna make sure that it's in a, done in a way that it represents the growth uh, as we move forward to 2030. So please keep that in mind. Um, in Brooklyn, uh, District 41, so we need changes there because in District 41 and 37, we need to make sure Ocean Hill is kept whole. There's a lot of history in Ocean Hill and it's the history that keeps the communities of interest together. And if you don't know the history of Ocean Hill, 
um, you should know. So Ocean Hill is very important to people of African descent, connects with Brownsville, and we want to make sure that that's kept whole so that, again, we preserve those districts. With some of the loss of the population in the Southeast uh, Brooklyn communities, uh, it is important, and in Central Brooklyn, it is important that you keep communities as whole and neighborhoods as whole as possible. So take 35 and 36, districts 35 and 36, for example. Um, I don't know if it's beneficial to keep everything the same. Yes, everyone says keep everything the same and we want everything the same and everything is honky dory. Yes, we, we get it. But um, then down the line, you lose a district. How long can District 35 be sustainable if some of Crown Heights is not reunited with Prospect Heights? Prospect Heights, although it seems totally gentrified, has, in the words of a community leader, has legacy families for people of African descent. And we want to make sure that District 35 is kept um, in a way that the plurality is able to continue to elect the candidate of its choice. So. You need to connect an economic development institution that is able to blend those tail of two districts together from the northern end of Farragut to uh, the southern end in uh, Crown Heights, in Prospect Heights. And the way to do that is to take a little bit of Crown Heights from District 36 to make sure that both can be kept whole. Okay, 36 will always be whole but we need to make sure that 35 and 36 are preserved through 30s. Through if, I, if I can ask you to not, wrap, wrap up, please. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm going to wrap up soon. Okay, okay, thank you. And then District 46. District 46, we need to make sure that the Flatlands line is respected uh, to keep Canarsie whole. Do not crack Canarsie. We did a lot of work the last time to make sure District 46 was put together and they were able to elect the candidate of their choice. And District 49, 45 needs an institution in this district so that it could continue to elect the candidate and do the work that it needs to do for the residents. Thank you. And thank you very much for your testimony. Next, we have Russell Squire virtually. Russell Squire. Is Russell Squire there? If not, uh, we'll need um, a translator for Bangla. Uh, next is Jasmine Amit. That's virtual. All right, I'll go on. Next is Kenneth, Kevin Livingston. Kevin Livingston, virtually. Not uh, virtual ver uh, Barry Schneider. Barry Schneider. Oh, there's me. That is you then. Yes, sir. Not uh, virtual ver uh, Barry Schneider. Barry yeah. Schneider. Yeah. Good. Yes. Yeah, that's me, sir. Yes. Your uh, turn to testify. You that is you then. Here I am. Sir. My name is Barry Schneider, and I'm the president of the uh, East. Uh, hold on, we're getting uh, feedback. Back. Can you hold on one second, sir? I'm not sure. Do you have anything on or is someone on that's not on mute? I just turned it off. It was oh, me. that was you. Okay, Sorry. fine. You're Let's up, start sir. Again. My name, yeah, <clears throat> commissioners, my name is Barry Schneider, and I'm the president of the East 60s Neighborhood Association. You're going to hear now a sort of different perspective from someone on the other side of the river. Uh, we, uh, uh, I just I speak today to ask that the district lines proposed for Queens Council District 26 and Manhattan Council District 5, which includes portions of Sutton Place, the Upper East Side, and all of Rosa Island, not be adopted for the following reasons. First, the draft proposal violates for the critical outlined the criteria outlined in the city charter section 52 1c d and e i didn't memorize that and section 52 2 the violation of these criteria results in districts where one neighborhoods and communities of interest are not kept intact the proposed district is not compact the proposed district results in an extreme crossover district and the proposed district 
is very oddly shaped. Further, the proposed redistricting of the easternmost portion of the section of Manhattan Island to become part of Queens ignores the very many communities of interest that would be affected. A river runs through it. There are several well-established neighborhood associations whose membership will be torn asunder. A number of neighborhood schools and several beloved parks will be broken apart. A river runs through it. Bedpost Alley, whose personnel, lie, personnel live in CD5, will in the future be represented by a council member on the other side of the East River in Queens. And councilmanic council uh, proportions would be very well shortchanged those sections on the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island, which no longer be an integral part of the rest of the Upper East Side. I strongly urge the City Districting Commission to reconsider this ill-conceived plan and not divide, but keep hold an indivisible and cohesive neighborhood. Thank you very much. And thank you for your testimony. Next is Judith Snyder. Oh, she, she'll be right with you. She, she'll be um, there. All you have to do is sir. slide the camera along. That's all. Well, she has her own computer. Okay. Yes, she is. Sorry about that. Uh, good evening, commissioners. My name is Judy Schneider, and I am co-chair of the Parks Committee of Community Board 8M but I am not speaking as a representative of Community Board 8 Manhattan. I am speaking as an individual. My first comment is the draft proposal for Manhattan and Roosevelt Island violate four of the criteria outlined in the city charter, section 52.1c, D and E, and section 52.2. The violation of these criteria are distinct and cannot be said enough. Neighborhoods and communities of interest are not kept intact, such as Roosevelt Island and Manhattan, and will be torn apart by a river. The proposed district is not compact. The proposed districts result in an extreme crossover district, and the proposed districts are very oddly shaped. To quote the executive director of the commission, Mr. John Flatow, when he talked about Staten Island, quote, keeping Staten Island together in order not to mess up Brooklyn. How about keeping Manhattan together in order not to mess up Queens? My second comment is about our parks. Community District 8M ranks 47th out of 51 council districts for the least amount of park space in New York City. By carrying out this plan, we would lose the Esplanade and Andrew Haswell Green Park Phase 3, which has not been yet been started to be built. It will probably take a minimum of $25 million to build. The Esplanade needs an incalculable amount of money for repairs. Will a council member in community district 26 Queens spend that kind of money in Manhattan? Remember, Roosevelt Island and Manhattan only represent 27% of the voters in council district 26 Queens, or will most of the members funds be spent in Queens? That question also applies to our schools, our libraries, all our city services that need additional money as well as participatory budgeting. Commissioners, Community Board 8 Manhattan has made a plan and submitted it to the commission to keep our district whole and taking into account the population in East District. Please take a good look at this plan and implement it. Thank you for listening to my testimony. I'm sure when you hear from Russell Squire, he will talk to you about the plan as he is our chair. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony. Much appreciated. Uh, next up is Kevin Livingston. Kevin Livingston? Okay, I'll go to the next one. Jennifer Barata on Zoom. Jennifer Barata? That is not her, that's one of our commissioners. Hi, Commissioner. Um, Next would be Lori Gore. Uh, Good afternoon, Kevin Livingston to you. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. You're up, sir. Kevin Livingston, your time is up for testimony. You're okay. Good, good afternoon. How are you doing? Thank you so much for taking me 
My name is Kevin Livingston. I'm a lifelong resident of Southeast Queens. Please forgive me, I'm uh, running around. Um, first, I would like to say um, thank you for convening this here uh, meeting, which is very important to our community. Um, I am born and raised in Southeast Queens 44 years, in particular, the areas of Laurelton and Springfield Gardens. Um, I want to first thank you for looking at the new redistrict and map and keeping JFK in the 31st district. I would ask that we would bring back Springfield, Gar Springfield Gardens to return that to the 31st. Through the representation of the leadership that we had there, um, it, it just shows uh, from our current council member and prior how they loved and hugged on the community. We want to keep that intact. Additionally, um, I, with the proposed maps in terms of splitting Rochdale Village, I would like to put a vote to keep Rochdale Village together. It truly is the jewel of Jamaica, and I feel like it will be splitting up resources. But again, I really hope that we keep 30, the 31st uh, district intact the way it is right now. In particular, again, keeping JFK in the 31st and also bringing back Springfield Gardens to that district. It is represented well. Um, our current council and uh, elected officials know the community well. And I just feel like it will be a disjustice to remove that from the 31st district. We have a lot of resources here. We have to keep it in this resource in our communities. Thank you very much. Uh, Jennifer, is it Barata? Virtually, Jennifer Barata. Okay, I'm told you she's here. Jennifer Barata. We'll come back. Lori Goodman. Okay. Uh, is it Alexandria Zorowski? And next would be Francie Scanlon. Francie Scanlon, virtually. Okay, I'll try one more time. I know I heard Jennifer Barata's here. I'm virtually here. Okay, so we're going to go back to in person. And next in person would be Annie. Is it Produce? Is Annie Produce here? This is in person. And then after Annie, we will have, is it Nelifar Rahim? And then following Nelifar, we have Jafar Produce. So Annie Produce, Nelifar Rahim, and Jafar Produce. So if the other two individuals want to start to come down as well, uh, that way you can follow. And someone will move your mic. You got it? Okay. There you go. Thank you. Hi, I'm Annie Ferdus. I'm testifying for District 26. I am one of the founder and artistic director of Bangladesh Institute of Performing Arts, BIPA. BIPA is a community organization that offers weekend arts and cultural programs in, in Bengali language for Bangladeshi children. We have been running our programs um, for the last 30 years in Woodside, Long Island City, Sunnyside, and other neighboring areas. Um, this is our little Bangladesh where we grew up together. We stayed together with the other Asian community to build political and community power. We celebrate our social and cultural um, identities in many different ways. We made friends with many other organizations that are situated, situated in this area. If this dis district is divided into four different uh, parts as proposed, we are going to lose all this cultural and social power. We are certain that we will lose many community services, especially the need of the language assistance that we are receiving now. Our council office provides for the immigrants. Um, the council, uh, the council, our council office provides the immigrants many opportunities and services that we don't want to lose for the new proposed district. Our political power and cultural identity depends on the unity and we already, that we already built 
um, in last 20 years. We need to keep it as it is. I strongly recommend making sure Woodside stays together with Long Island City, Sunnyside, and Western Astoria as it has been in the last 30 years that I have seen. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Is, is it Nelafar Rahim? If not, is uh, Jafar produced? And Lara Gregory? It would be Lara Gregory, Sharon Pope Marshall, and then Frankie Correa. So Lara Gregory? Oh, there you are. Okay. I'm Sharon Pope Marshall. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. I did my best. <laughs> Technology. Okay. Uh, thank you for your patience. Not My not. name is Sharon Pope Marshall, and I'm the executive director of Civitas. For over 40 years, we've advocated for sound, context sensitive urban planning, zoning, waterfront, and land use policies to improve neighborhood quality of life in El Barrio, East Harlem and on the Upper East Side, which are in Manhattan Council District 5. Thank you, commissioners. We really appreciate your service. And thank you for this opportunity to testify against carving out approximately 50 blocks, portions of Sutton Place, the Upper East Side, and all of Roosevelt Island from Council District 5. Those Manhattan-based communities would be incorporated into a Queens Council District. Each of our Council District 5 neighborhoods are economically, politically, and socially connected we would be unable to stand united to address issues of mutual concern and import, such as participatory budgeting, congestion pricing, and other public policy issues. I should note as well that the City Council has power over the city's $100 billion budget and votes on municipal service delivery, land use, affordable housing, economic development, investment, and other community initiatives. Our unified voice, if the carve out is indeed ratified, would be substantially diminished to be subordinated by and subsumed with neighboring Queens community concerns that may not impact us. And of course, Roosevelt Island in particular has been geo geopolitically linked with the Upper East Side since its inception as a residential community. The Roosevelt Island Tramway is based on the Upper East Side. Moreover, as was explained earlier, the proposed council district is not compact and would result in an unnecessary borough crossover that is logistically oddly shaped. And most importantly, neighborhoods of common interest and concerns would not be kept intact all are violations of criteria as set forth in the city charter for determining city council boundaries. 
Civitas opposes this disruption of the integrity of City Council District 5 that is wholly centered on the Upper East Side and Roosevelt Island. Thank you for listening. Thank you again for your service and thank you for your consideration. And thank you for your testimony. <laughs> Frankie Correa, and then after Frankie Correa, I, Danique Miller, and then following I, Danique Miller, we will have, is it Kam Thapa? Hi, good evening. Thank you to the commission for the opportunity to speak to you on behalf of our community. My name is Frankie Correa. I grew up in Red Hook, Brooklyn, which is currently part of District 38. I moved out, of, out to Sunset Park in the early 80s when most of the factories, warehouses, and shipping yards closed down. I, starring, I still currently own and live in Sunset Park with my wife and two daughters. When I moved to Sunset Park, it was pretty much the same thing. It was a working class community who worked at the factories and warehouses in our waterfront that has recently been replaced by urban retro malls when our government couldn't protect our manufacturing from going overseas. There have always been a strong connection in both Red Hook and Sunset Park, who held the line through the 70s, 80s, and 90s when drugs, gangs, economic neglect ravaged our communities. And we were able to rebuild these two communities under one representation. Now that these two neighborhoods have been growing and Manhattan is too expensive to live in, there has been a large migration of city dwellers. Developers have been focused on taking over our communities and pushing people out. Their focus has been to take over our waterfront, but since our communities have a strong opposition and, the, and been fortunate enough to have city council represent, representation to follow the wishes of, our, of their constituents, the next important move for the powerful real estate industry is to gerrymander and maneuver to weaken our voices out of power and remove those representatives who are willing to fight for the audacity of equality. This, this map we join has char characterization plots to divide and conquer and take the voices from those with little influence. It is not going to represent our working class District 38. For, first, Sunset Parks get separated from a whole from the United Front of People of Color from Red Hook. Secondly, S Sunset Park gets divided in half again by a proposed District 43rd, designed to create a majority Asian district. As a national grid field operation inspector who has been on the job for 34 years, I know these neighborhoods intimately and witnessed the migration and gentrification of both Brooklyn and Queens. District 38 currently covers parts of Bensonhurst, which makes no connection sense. If the commission wants to give the Asian community a stronger and full representation, which, which I support, I would, I would suggest the, commi the, the commission create a district east of 9th Avenue to Bensonhurst, Dyker Heights, and Bath Beach, Eric, Bath Beach area where Asian population has migrated and grown tremendously. You should not break up two communities that have binded well together to create another and not give them proper representation. With the proposed change, most of the new voters in District 38 are going to be from, from the Bay Ridge area with a higher AMI and don't share the same social economic challenges that, that don't, and don't have connection to what happens to the working front. Under, under this proposal, Red Hook will now face the same challenge as the majority of District 39 39 voters come from more affluent area of Park Slope where their representatives have to choose the influential part of the district with high, high, higher voting, um, people with power, with low AMI. The Gowanus rezoning is an example of divide and conquer. Gowanus is part of District 39, but it's, it's no match for a powerful real estate industry with lots of money, influence, patience, uh, and patience on the buy, buy and hold long game. Notice that after the federal super fund, they were able to rezone Gowanus and city, and the city miraculously was able to find shut up money to resolve Gowanus NYCHA issues, just to, just to get their rezoning. Thank you to the commission 
for taking the time to consider my testimony. As a lifelong resident of this district, I understand we must respond to the changes. However, this proposal will be a disservice to our community by tearing it apart and, con and combining it with other communities that have a very different racial, social, economic, and political differences. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. <laughs> Next is I. Unique Miller. Good evening, good evening, members of the distinguished members of the commission and to everyone else that came out tonight. And I gotta say, that's a hard act to follow, all right? So, good evening, I'm count, uh, former council member I. Denick Miller of 27 Council District, currently district leader of the <clears throat> 33rd Assembly District in uh, Southeast Queens. My testimony tonight is uh, about the 27 Council District primarily but also about Southeast Queens and uh, outlier impact on the 28th, 31st, and 24th districts, uh, council districts. I begin with the obvious, the lack of density in the 27th district, mainly because of uh, there's a community of single uh, family uh, home ownership and certainly being impacted by the 5% uh, threshold that, that we are looking at and uh, folks uh, moving out. Certainly this has uh, been an impact on communities' uh, population, but not its political and economic empowerment and its cultural influences, all of which is well known and well documented locally and nationally. Southeast Queens is home of many political and cultural icons and has its own historical district, i.e. Asley Park. The phenomenon of political power is not by accident, it is it in fact by all metrics that measure uh, voter participation, civic and faith-based uh, engagement, union participation and home ownership is where we thrive. <clears throat> While not mutually exclusive together, they have helped to make and create the largest African-American, Afro-Caribbean com uh, homeowner community in the nation, as well as the most densely populated union community and the most densely populated union state in the nation. <clears throat> uh, the economic and, and the, the social and economic impact of Southeast Queens and its surrounding communities, in particular the downtown Jamaica area, which is currently undergoing a major renaissance of housing, transportation, economic development, et cetera, unfortunately is being negatively impacted by its currently lack of continuity because of its current boundaries, uh, mainly the 27th, 24th council district lines being split and boarded at the north and south end of Jamaica Avenue. Because of these boundaries, Jamaica lacks continuity, not only just in social, cultural, and economic development, but more importantly, because, in, because of its delivery and services. For example, Community Board 12 has the, the highest number of shelters placement in the city of New York. Most densely, the most densely populated portion of that lies within a few blocks north of Jamaica Avenue in Community Board 12. While there are thousands of newly affordable housing units that have been built uh, south of Jamaica Avenue and Community Board 27, conversely, we see overwhelmingly market rate new development housing north side of Jamaica Avenue, which is not consistent with the economic values of the residents that currently live there, which also, for a plethora of reasons, lends itself to gentrification. Continuity and values are important. Just as we have seen the unification of downtown Jamaica bids, and I know this is something else, but it was, that was something that was spearheaded in Community Boards 27 with support from Community Board 28 and very little from others. During my time in the council, while we never acknowledge boundaries, boundaries matter. When it creates unfair burdens on council districts, representation should reflect the needs of the masses and exhibit the continuity necessary to maintain upward mobilities for these historic communities of color. These communities deserve representation that share their values and experiences and bring cultural competency with their, and their voice with them to City Hall. Furthermore, an attempt to create new opportunities at the expense of these Southeast Queens historic communities is unjust and further diminishes the mission of the Voting Rights Act. In conclusion, Rochdale Village, 
one of the largest cooperative communities in the nation, deserves such continuity in service represent and representation. Instead, we see an attempt to subdivide this enclave of black resiliency into multiple council districts. This is an indictment of incompetency and sensitivity, and sensitivity, and it's intentionally diminishes one of the most strongest uh, and powerful voting blocks, not just in the state, but in the nation, what is Southeast Queens. I would suggest further that if the objections of this commission is to expand the footprint of the 24th, that you do it east-west and not north-south. If, if I can respectfully ask to wrap up, because mm -hmm. we have to, if you can start to wrap up, sir. Uh, because you are a, 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 a friend and a neighbor and someone I'll probably have to see tomorrow as we walk and run, uh, I, I will conclude. So, Thank uh, you, sir. So submitted by I. That's why I said respectfully. Thank you, sir. Oh, I didn't mean it that set, but thank you very much for your testimony. Next we have, is it Kam Thapa? Kam Thapa? Okay, after that we'll have Marilyn Miller, and then after Marilyn Miller, we will go back to the virtual and then back to in person. Is Marilyn Miller here? Marilyn Miller? Miss, are you Marilyn Miller? Okay, just wanted to know. That's all. Oh, she's walking outside. Okay. I thought you said you were walking to the mic. So let me go back to virtual. And virtual, I have next up is Erica Burson. Erica Burson. Erica Burson. Not then. Jenna, is it Lang? Jenna Lang? I'm sorry. Is Erica Burson? Erica Burson? Erica Burson, yes. Erica Burson? Right. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. Oh, you are here. Um, okay. Yeah. There just you go. Just really quickly, just really quickly, um, Russell Squire is the CBA chair. And he was called, but nobody promoted him. So can you go to him first and then come back to me, please? I'll be glad to, since we, we did a call, but no problem. Russell Squire. He's in the way. Russell Squire? They need to promote him. I must show what you mean by promoting him. So he can speak what they're doing to everybody. It'll allow them to speak. So I'm not sure who's operating the Zoom, but there's no way to chat with anybody that's hosting all right so let us look into that why don't you take time now and testify sure. and then we'll see what's happening thank you um and thank you for for having us i live in um uh, i live on the upper east side of manhattan in council district five um but i'm really here hopefully testifying for the collective because um, based on the current maps, half a block away from me, which um, is, is um, known as Bedpan Alley, where all of the hospitals are, would become CD26. And based on our city charter and based on the rules that the commission has on their own site, um, this actually goes against both of them. But I, I'm not going to rehash what other people from both communities in Queens and the Upper East Side have said. Um, one of the things that hasn't been addressed right now is owing to all of the hospitals and the academic institutions like HSS, Memorial Sloan Kettering, New York Crestwall, Cornell, um, Rockefeller and Cornell Tech, um, Manhattan elected officials have years of experience and expertise in addressing the compatibility of these institutions with surrounding residential areas. Um, and, and we're concerned not only about how a Queens Council member will be able to handle this, but it will also show that Queens has infinitely more medical centers in it than they do. And having spoken, um, having attended their um, committee meeting last week, we know that isn't the case. 
Um, we also know that there aren't easy ways for people to get to the hospitals or to the doctor's offices. In addition to that, many of the doctor's offices that are affiliated with the institutions would actually be broken up. Their, their offices would actually end up in a different district than the hospital is in, um, creating you know, logistical issues and oversight for many different council members, for many different community boards. Um, and the other thing is the Upper East Side has a significant population of elderly people. So would the idea be that council member from Queens would have two offices, one on the Upper East Side, because we know that older people infinitely um, are more comfortable going into their council member's office than certainly being on email or on Twitter or other ways. So while, while it, you know, my, my neighbors have addressed the issues that we face with taking Roosevelt Island out of the district, which has always been here, um, as well as the parks, um, the hospitals are a huge part of the Upper East Side's um, character and continue to be. And, and again, half a block from my building would be a new district. Um, and again, based on the city charter, it goes against the city charter to split up these neighborhoods and communities. And I, I, it's interesting that um, a gentleman earlier from Queens said that that neighborhoods in Queens go by their own neighborhoods, but places in Brooklyn and and Manhattan don't. And you know, as a New Yorker who was born on the Upper East Side and has lived. Um, in different places in Manhattan as well as overseas, I would say that we are we are just as community oriented, especially when you look at the neighborhoods around the hospitals and especially when you look at the neighborhoods around the the um, universities. And speaking of universities, the current map literally breaks the um, bridge over Lexington Avenue at Hunter College into two districts right in the middle of, of the street on Lexington. Um, so for those reasons, I, I would strongly urge the commission to return to the drawing board and not adopt the proposed districts um, referenced above for CD5 and CD26. Um, you know, we're, we're all here to, to help you come to an equitable conclusion for our neighborhoods and our communities, but the current version, it just really isn't it. Okay. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer Barata. So the next three would be Jennifer Barata, um, Alexandria Sariski, and then um, uh, Francie Scallon, and then we'll go back uh, in person. Okay. Nope. Alexandria Sarasky. Hi. Hi. Good evening. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to testify. Can you hear me? We can, but just for the official record, uh, your your name, which one? Alexandria. Yeah, Sirachi. Alexandria. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I'm testifying this evening in support of the district, Districting Commission's preliminary draft of the council districts. I live in District 19 and I've lived here my whole life. And I support the first draft because I believe it's important to keep the district the way it is. The first draft's uh, district lines are beneficial for the community because it preserves the historical significance of the, di of the district itself. The communities in the district get along well as they are, and most of us feel that it's important not to divide up the district. Um, last, but definite, definitely not least, the communities of the district represent the diversity of the city. From recent immigrants to third generation Americans, we're a community within the district that supports each other and we share the same hardworking uh, family values that make this district so special. Thank you so much. And thank you for your testimony. 
Next virtually is Francie Scanlon. And whoever's on the screen, um, you can- Hi, my name's Jennifer Brada. Oh, okay, welcome. Hi, um, nice to meet you all. Um, I live in Bellows, Queens. We're part of District 23. I would like to say that although Bellows is somewhat represented, it is not always the case. We have been, <clears throat> whenever the power goes out on my block, it takes Con Ed forever to find us. Why? Because we're on a dead end street. We we have lost power during to the on Sandy. It took till election day of that year to get the power back on, and all it required with a switch. I'm not saying that the districts are wrong, but what I'm saying is that when it comes to fellows being represented, we are freaking the shut of the threat. And quite frankly, I'm sick of it. I am 43 years old. I have lived here my entire life. And I would like to see us represented better. And not just simply because we're, NASA, we're near the Nassau County border, but because we deserve to be represented better. We deserve to have our people told, hey, this is what we're going to do. And we're actually going to make it better for you guys to live. Because when the Long Island Railroad decided to raise the new High Park Railroad, the traffic backed up to the Cross Island, going past the Cross Island on Jamaica Avenue and Jericho Turnpike. And I was late getting to work. Now, I know that's not what you're dealing with, but what I'm telling you is we need people from here who actually care that this is going on, that the street race is going on, that the fire is going up from Memorial Day weekend through July. We need someone to care. So please do something that shows that you give a damn about Eastern Queens. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Let me try one more time and then we'll go back in person. Uh, is it Francie Scanlon? Then we have Assemblyman Khalil Anderson, and then following him will be, oh, I'm sorry, before we get to the assembly person. Yes. Hi. <laughs> yes, in the uh, blue sweater. Yes, good evening. Great to be with you. And your name? You know, it's hard to, it's hard to imagine that on this day, August 16th, 1896, the last great gold rush in the Americas occurred. In many ways, I think it's very befitting as to why we're here. Classic tech school, old school, new school, right now school, American politics. To the victor belong the spoils. And sometimes when the victor is greedy or loses judgment or loses wisdom, assuming all three were in place to begin with, 
they have a lust for power that is transmuted and communicated in that bad old way called gerrymandering. And that's why we're here. I think it's important to recognize the fact that gerrymandering has been in the vein and the blood of the American political system since day one. And many would say it served America quite well. Of course, there are many who would credibly argue otherwise, in my opinion. Listening here tonight to all the passion that has been brought to the table, and I so honor everyone's point of view, I can't help but appreciating how everyone wants to stay in their crib. They want to stay in their hood. They don't want to cross the line. So if this commission goes down in history as failing, then fail big. Fail on the right side of history. Appeal to politicians who understand that gerrymandering is like quicksand. It's gone. It's not your ace in the hole. It's not the only way you're going to get votes. There are real stakeholders who know what you're doing, who care about what you're doing, who wish to be engaged in what you're doing. Indeed, if the last council taught us anything, it's that the old playbook, even the council's old playbook, the rules have changed. When the member from the Upper East Side, Ben Kalios, was against the change on the South Side of 67th Street, a block from where I grew up, his voice did not carry the day. There to four, council members went along to get along. They showed collegial deference to the member and the member's wish where an important decision was being made. I think it's time to unmask the truth. That while it's terrific, and I love the technology that has been engaged in the service of drawing lines, lines don't make a district. People make a district, and every district deserves the right to have a representative who does not seem to cater to only one group over another, but who has the capacity, the recognition, the ability to improvise, to find a way through if you to could that great up, sea in the sky, compromise with character and do it in a way that is just. Today, Mr. Chairman, I know how much you love jazz. It also happens to be the birthday of three fabulous jazz pianists, none other than Mel Waldron, Carl Perkins, and of course, Bill Evans. I am beseeching you all to find a way out of this morass, to improvise to the better if, side if you of could history. Wrap up, please, because we do. Yes, Thank where you. every person in the city will understand that their voice matters Th and that their vote matters and it will be counted. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Oh, if I could just say to the audience, in fairness to the speakers, even though you may totally agree with what they're saying, when we're having it transcribed and the applause is taking place, it's difficult to hear what the speaker is saying. So I just say that as we move forward. All right, that's all. Thank you. Assembly member. I'm trying to turn that on. Can you hear me? Okay. I don't know if I can match her passion, although her... Uh, uh, some of the comments she made were, were quite interesting. Um, 
But good evening to the entire uh, commission. Uh, gracious to be here this evening. My name is Camille Anderson, and I'm proud to represent the beautiful and diverse 31st Assembly District in Southeast Queens, which encompasses so many amazing and unique neighborhoods. But I want to talk about the two council districts uh, that are in the majority of my assembly district today, uh, and what are some uh, guiding principles that the commission should use uh, as we're going through the redistricting process. So we want to make sure that, number one, a district that as, is as historic as the 31st Council District uh, looks at the history of the creation of that district. It was created uh, roughly around the late 80s, early 90s to ensure that representation of a growing African-American and Caribbean-American community uh, could be heard in the city council, which was not uh, heard prior in the former uh, position in the city council. It was called something different, Board of Estimate, I believe. And so in the, the original drawing of the city council district, uh, the, the JFK airport and all the elements were kept in one district. So the cargo areas, as well as the actual areas in which airplanes fly, uh, runways, et cetera, the operations space uh, has historically been in one council district. It already exists in one assembly district, which is my assembly district, one Senate district, which is uh, the 10th senatorial district, and one congressional district, which is, the, which is the fifth congressional district. So everywhere else, it's in one district except the city council. So we'd like that to be a guiding principle in terms of the, the uh, redistricting process. We also want to make sure that the commission considers keeping the Rockaway Peninsula and areas of the Rockaway Peninsula that have a growing Caribbean American and Black American population uh, together. So I want to talk about that, right? So in the proposed maps, uh, there's some moves. There's some moves uh, of, I believe, election or uh, census tracts that move parts of the 31st into the 32nd. So we want to make sure that those communities are kept together. Two of the reasons why. If you look at the public housing developments that are on the edge of the 31st and the 32nd council districts, uh, that development is called Hamill Houses. And that development is a consolidation of Carlton Manor, which is in further into the district. And so that's one development, even though the developments are not physically in the same space, it's one development. So that's a consolidation. And I just want us to respect that consolidation of both Hamill Houses and Carlton Manor. That's really important. Also, the other council district that overlaps me the most is the 28th council district. And I noticed that Rochdale Village, which is the largest cooperative village outside of Co-op City. So we have our own little Co-op City here in Queens and we're gracious for it. But the current maps divide that community, which shouldn't be. Uh, and as I close out, because I hear the bell, now, you know, when you give a politician a mic, we don't know when to stop. So I'm glad you guys have the timers. Uh, we want to make sure that the growing uh, South Asian American community uh, is represented uh, by uniting parts uh, of the 32nd district, uniting neighborhoods that align into the 32nd district, growing uh, South Asian American communities uh, into that district would ensure that their representation is met on the council level. So those are my three guiding principles, and I hope the commission, I uh, see folk taking diligent notes, so that's good. Um, I hope that the commission considers those things because it's about making sure that there's a balance uh, in representation and that communities are, which have historically been fighting for a voice uh, in City Hall and, and et cetera can continue to have that representation. So thank you again to the commission for your hard work. Uh, I do not envy you and I appreciate everything that you all are doing here tonight. Thank you, Assembly Member. Okay, the next three in person will be Marilyn Miller, then Nick Galata, and then Carolina Gill. So Marilyn Miller, Nick Galata, and then Carolina Gill. Oh. All right, so I don't see Marilyn Miller. Is Nick Galata? Okay, hi. Thank you, Chair Walcott and members of the District and Commission. My name is Nick Gulota, and I'm a resident of Jackson Heights. And for many years, District 26 was my home. My testimony is based on over 15 years of experience working at the City Council and the Mayor's Office and as an organizer in Queens. The main issue I'm here to speak tonight about is of Woodside being divided into four council districts. 
In my experience, when it comes to the delivery of government services, it is always working class communities of color that live in neighborhoods divided into multiple districts that are ignored the most by our city. I've seen elected officials and government leaders decide that certain communities weren't worthy of resources, weren't central to their bases of power, or lacked the numbers needed to be important. The priorities of these communities are less likely to be taken seriously by our city. Constituent service needs are treated with less urgency, and community organizations do not receive the funding they deserve. As with the Filipino and Bangladeshi communities and Latinx communities, I want to specifically highlight the Tibetan community as well as the larger Him Himalayan community that will be negatively impacted by the proposed map if adopted. A majority of this community, many of whom are refugees as a result of occupation of their homeland, reside in both the 26th and 25th districts. By dividing Woodside, the proposed map would siphon many of these community members into the 30th council district as well. It would disconnect the Tibetan community residing in the 26th council district from the Tibetan community center. I've worked with this community for many years and while serving at the New York City Office of Immigrant Affairs, uh, we worked with closely with leaders from various Himalayan communities to estimate their combined population. The population, our unofficial estimate was about 50,000, over 50,000 people, the majority residing in Western Queens neighborhoods. Should the proposed map be adopted, over a dozen Tibetan and Himalayan community centers, religious institutions in Woodside would needlessly become siloed in District 30, further marginalizing this community of interest. Like with other communities, Dividing the Tibetan and larger Himalayan community into three council districts will cause harm to their political trajectory and power. I urge the commission to keep Woodside whole. I support the map proposed by council member Julie Wan, where the boundaries are 31st Avenue to the north so that the Tibetan community center can remain in the 26th council district. I also believe, after speaking with many of my friends in the community, that Queensbridge and the Ravenswood houses should remain in the district. I ask that you keep this a Queens district, and I'm opposed to the incorporation of Manhattan's East Side and Roosevelt Island, as this will dilute the political power of working class residents of color in District 26. Lastly, I wanna take a second to lend my strong support for the Unity Plans map that will keep South Asian and Indo-Caribbean communities in one council district between Richmond Hill and Ozone Park. Thank you for your time and service to our city. And thank you. And I, I can't say you win a prize, but I think that's the first time I heard it end right on the time of going off. So congratulations on that. Next. Welcome. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for being here to listen to our concerns uh, regarding uh, the proposed maps. Um, my name is Carolina, and I am a Colombian immigrant. I am here to make sure that the voices of those who cannot be here are heard. Uh, I am here to urge the redistricting commission to go back to the drawing table and keep District 26 together. This is a diverse community that we are, and we are made up of mostly, um, we are made up of the very communities of interest protected by the Voting Rights Act. The proposed map for District 26 dec decreases the Latino population from 29% to 22%. We cannot also forget the residents of the Queensbridge houses, Ravenswoods, and Woodside houses, the largest public housings, uh, houses in the country that have been part of this district since the 1940s. These three NYCHAs being together provide consistency and continuation in receiving public resources such as capital improvements. Cutting them out of the district they uh, traditionally have been part of will disrupt the education accessibility and funding of projects. These preliminary maps will break up our immigrant communities and communities of color into four different council districts, uh, severely limiting our political power. These proposed maps fail to comply with the city charter uh, requirements of fair and effective representation. I ask you here today that you go back to the drawing table and keep District 26 in Queens only. Thank you. Thank you very much for your testimony. Okay, we'll have. Three more in person, and then we will go back to the virtual. Uh, Sarah Mohammed, William Scarborough, and Christina Sovereign. Sarah Mohammed, William Scarborough, and Christina Sovereign.
Good evening. Why don't you move the mic just down a little more? Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Good evening. Thank you to the commission for holding this hearing. My name is Sarah Muhammad, and I'm an active member of South Queens Women's March, a local grassroots gender justice organization. At South Queens Women's March, I am also a member of our Civic Engagement Committee. I have been a resident of South Ozone Park for the past 22 years. My family and I have been living in the Bronx, and pr the primary reason we moved to this area in Queens is because we found ourselves coming here every weekend. My husband played cricket in the neighborhood. The cultural clothing that we purchased were along Liberty Avenue. All my food supplies are purchased here, from the vegetable to the halal meat. When we were looking for a home to purchase, we knew this neighborhood reflected our traditions and our values. We have deep ties to this community of interest, specifically the Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park areas that are defined in the Asian American Legal Defense Fund Community of Interest map, which I'm submitting in my written testimony. Since I've had the opportunity to vote, even back home in Trinidad, I always exercise that right. It was a value passed on to me by my dad, who also made voting a priority. When I got to this country, I continued to exercise that right and have always encouraged my friends, family, and colleagues to do the same. When it's time to vote, I call upon them and make sure they are registered or plan on going to the polls. Through my work with South Queens Women's March, I have also done street canvassing and supported my fellow community members to register to vote and to learn about upcoming elections. However, sometimes I think to myself, what is the purpose of doing this when we have never been able to elect a candidate of our choice? I currently live in District 32. Our community has never been able to elect someone in this district who represents our specific interests. For example, none of the candidates who have been elected to this district champions immigration rights as part of their policy platform. The way our districts have been drawn at the city council level never made sense to me. And if you stand on the side of justice, you will change them for the better. The map released by the commission further divides our community, splitting us even more across districts 28, 29, and 32, instead of keeping us together. We are opposed to this map as part of the APA Voice Redistricting Task Force. South Queens Women's March support the Unity Map. The Unity Map creates a plurality APA district in, in Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park in District 32. As you go back to the drawing board, we ask that you please don't divide us. Please keep Richmond Hill and South Ozone Park whole. Thank you. And thank you for your testimony. Assemblymember William Scarborough. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is William Scarborough, uh, former New York State Assemblyman and currently president of the Addisley Park Civic Organization. Uh, commission members, thank you for this opportunity to express our views in regard to the draft City Council District maps. I am presenting this testimony on behalf of a number of civic organizations whose names I will list at the end of the testimony. We appreciate the hard work and effort that the Commission has put into drafting these maps. However, we have serious concerns about some of the proposed changes that are in the draft maps, and we wish to bring these issues to your attention. First. We're very concerned that the draft maps moves most of downtown Jamaica out of the 27th Council District and into the 24th Council District. Downtown Jamaica has been an economic engine of this area, and the development and revitalization of Jamaica has provided jobs and business opportunities for the surrounding black community that has historically been left out of these opportunities. This has been driven in part by black council members in the 27th Council District directing funding into the development of Jamaica and also insisting that historically bypassed black workers and entrepreneurs be given fair opportunities for participation in this growth. Taking a large part of downtown Jamaica out of the 27th Council District will in effect close off these opportunities for that black community at a time when investment in Jamaica is at its highest level. Additionally, the shoppers that make up the bulk of Jamaica's consumers 
overwhelmingly come from the communities of Jamaica, St. Albans, Hollis, South Roseland Park, and other black and minority communities in the 27th and 28th council districts. Residents of the 24th CD, who largely reside in Jamaica states, Kew Gardens, Fresh Meadows, and parts of Flushing, do not as a rule patronize Jamaica and will have little incentive to support the push for the development of Jamaica's downtown. We urge you to reject this proposed change and restore the current northern boundaries of the 27th Council District. Secondly, we are very concerned that the proposed map splits Rochdale Village and puts it into two separate council districts. Rochdale Village is the second largest cooperative in the country, a development of over 25,000 residents that is 100% owner occupied. The history of Rochdale Village is a microcosm of the civil rights movement. When it was built in 1961 on the grounds of the old Jamaica racetrack, blacks were not allowed to work on that project. It took demonstrations by civil rights leaders who went to jail to break this barrier of segregation. When it opened in 1963, 10% of the residents were black. During the tumult of the 1960s and 1970s, whites left Rochdale in droves and the development faced serious decline. It has since rebounded, becoming 100% owner occupied and the voting power of 25,000 residents mandates that the representative of the 28th Council District pay close attention to their needs. To split this development into two districts would run counter to general principles of keeping communities with, with common interests and uh, common needs and interests intact and would dilute the power of one of the largest predominantly black communities in New York City and indeed the country. We urge the commission to reconsider this proposed change. Finally, we are in support of the redistricting maps that have been proposed by the council members of the 27th, 28th, and 31st districts. We feel that these maps protect the economic interests of the residents of Southeast Queens and keep communities with common interests and needs together. Thank you for your consideration.